from the Tie Cats Audio Network. This is Tie Cats Today with Braden Neville. On today's episode of Tie Cats Today, Mark Leggio joins the show after re signing with the Tie Cats. We discuss his choice to re sign with the Cats, off season training, and more. And the CFL free agency communication window officially opens up. It's Monday, February 5th, 2024, and you're listening to Tie Cats Today. It's going to be a busy week in the CFL as the CFL communications window has officially opened, allowing free agents to talk to all nine teams in the league before free agency opens up on Valentine's Day. The window opened up yesterday at noon and will close at noon on the 11th. The Ticats did get a couple signings done before the window opened up, re-signing punter Corey Vedvik and kicker Mark Leggio, two guys who came in during the year last year and were able to benefit that special teams. And joining me to talk about his decision to remain with the Ticats is Ticats kicker Mark Leggio. Legs, congrats on the new deal, man, and thanks for joining me here today to talk about it. Hey, awesome. Thank you so much. Um, Glad we were able to get the deal done and just happy to be back in Steeltown. How important was it for you to, to come back to Hamilton this season and play again here in 2024? Well, it means a lot to me, right? Um, just getting the opportunity to join Hamilton after one game into the season last year, just getting to know like the locker room, the coaches, the staff, and everyone there. It's just Hamilton itself as an organization is awesome and just means a lot to me being close to home too and especially being with Hamilton. It's just an awesome opportunity. What was that first season like playing in front of this this fan base that's so passionate about football? Oh, the fan base is something else, like especially that Labor Day game against Toronto, just like the energy in the stadium all the time, like fans, they're really into it. And that's what I just, uh, I really liked about Hamilton this, this season was just the energy that the, the fans in the stadium brings like on game day is something else. And, and what was it like, I mean, getting to experience that first game coming here during the season and, and then to play in front of that fan base, but, but what did you notice was different about playing here in Hamilton as opposed to other places you've played? I don't know. There's just like that different energy, you know, like when that other team comes on the field, it's like you, you know you're playing in Hamilton. So I think like a lot of teams have that game marked off on the calendars. Like, oh, we got to go, we got to go to Hamilton and then, you know, we deal with our <laughs> fan base and everything like that. Uh, there's just there's just something about it. It's like just being on the field or even watching it from the stands, even hearing what my friends and family say when they come to the game. It's it's just something different and something I think everyone should kind of get the chance to experience. Following the season, was there any doubt that you'd return here to, or did you know this was the place you wanted to play again? I knew I wanted to come back to Hamilton 100%. Uh, just uh, obviously just, you know, the way that the free agency works and everything knows, everybody knows how it works and, I'm just glad that we were able to come to a deal and I'm just happy to be back in Hamilton, just be part of a great organization and, you know, just love the guys that, and like the, just a sense of brotherhood we have in the locker room. There's going to be a familiar face to you being the special teams coordinator next year. And that's Paul Boudreaux. What can you say about him and your time playing for him and back in Winnipeg? Yeah, he's awesome. You know, like uh, I'm glad that he, he landed in Hamilton. Like we got a good, really good connection with each other and, uh, we're pretty good buddies, you know, it's on and off the field. Um, uh, obviously, like, congrats to Jeff for moving on to Hawaii football. He was awesome coach, like, loved getting to work with him, one of the all-time greats. And just, like, you know, having a familiar face in Hamilton and, you know, me and uh, Boudreau are pretty good friends, like I said, on and off the field. It's going to be an awesome year to get to work with him again. Was that a guy you've kind of been keeping in contact with over the years, even when you came over here to Hamilton? We always kept in contact, you know, like you, you – you know, during football, you build relationships on and off the field. And that's one that I kept off the field. And we just, you know, connected well with each other down in Winnipeg. And obviously, he was my first special teams coach in the pros. So just having that connection with him was awesome. And I'm just uh, really glad I'm going to get the chance to work with him again and uh, hopefully see him sometime soon up in Hamilton. What kind of coaching styles does he bring? What kind, what kind of coach is he? He's... uh. He's, he's like, you know, when we're in the office, you know, it's down to business, you know, got to get what we got to get done. Um, he really cares about the specials, the, the special teams game and, you know, how, how important we know it all is. And um, he just like he brings like some sort of energy that uh, just like the passion to it and just wanting to work with him. And he's very easy to really like talk to, get to know like what kind of schemes he wants to do and stuff like that. And he's uh, I think the guys will get to like him like pretty quick on our team. Was there any guys once you going back to the re-signing? Were there any guys that reached out to you right away as soon as they heard that legs would be back playing for the black and gold? 
Um, well, I, I don't think it's out there yet, but like, you know, I have friends and family and some of the guys on the team, they're like, ah, legs, you know, and they're giving me the nice little Italian <laughs> gesture and everything. But yeah, no, like, uh, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy to be back. And, uh, especially having like, you know, Gordon White, the long snapper still there, get that connection going. So it's going to be another awesome year. And what has the training looked like for you so far this off season? I know it's a little different being a kicker, but, but how's that been going and getting prepared for next year? Oh, you know, like, so obviously when the season, the season ended, you know, it's more so like, not so, so much like getting back at it right away, just like getting the body back to normal and like kind of, you know, taking it easy and getting ready for like the 2024 season. And, you know, training has been steady so far, you know, in the gym, about five, five days a week on the field, twice a week. So not killing yourself already, but, you know, starting mm-hmm. to pick it up as it gets closer and closer to May. What is that like? What are some unique kicker training drills? If there's some young kickers out there, what are some stuff that you're doing to to kind of train that aspect of the game? Yeah, so it's definitely a different aspect of the way that we're supposed to train compared to like, you know, other positions. The one thing I could say, you know, like when I was younger in university, I always wanted to match the big weight with the guys, you know, try and lift the most weight. And guys hated me in the gym because like, man, like, what are you doing? Like, why are you lifting so much weight? But, you know, it's just something I, I think that it shows that you work hard in the gym and on the field, but I would say it's a lot more explosive movements instead of like the heavy squats and stuff like that. So a lot of single leg stuff, a lot of the explosive like supersets and, you know, it's not always about the weight. It's about how you're moving the weight and how quickly you can move it. Another guy coming back is Vedvik. Uh, what's the relationship like with him and what, have you been talking to him at all throughout this off season? He's a guy you spend a lot of time with during the season. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've, we've kept in touch a little bit. I know he went down, he's back in, uh, he's back home now. So, um, I'm just glad like he, he's getting a chance to come back and, you know, like just him coming like halfway through the season and getting to work with him because we were familiar with each other when we were both on Sask in Winnipeg and we kind of mm-hmm. kept in touch on the field, but, uh, getting to work with him and like the, the passion he has for to like the work he puts in the gym and, and on the field and, uh, just like getting to work with him being my holder and, you know, like just the connection we built is just very easy going and just such a great guy. Yeah. How different is that connection between a punter and a kicker and a, and in your case, a holder too, but what's that connection like with a guy like that? I mean, you must be spending tons of time together and talking all the time throughout a season. Yeah. You know, it's basically like he's, he's your brother for the year. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially to like, you know, when we go to road games, he's your roommate. You guys do like basically everything together during the season. So we, we had a pretty tight group last year with me, Gordo, and him, and uh, I'm just uh, glad we'll get to keep it going and uh, keep that connection strong. I think that's a big thing is just being comfortable and having that, like, that connection with somebody that really improves the game. Do you have any goals for next season, for 2024, that you'd like to build on? Um, goals, personally, for me, is just, you know, get better every year. That's uh, that's what I strive for is just going one for one. You know, it's uh, – that's – I've mm-hmm. – I'm pretty hard on myself when it comes to like kicking and uh, obviously you want to be the best and do the best you can every time you're out there on the field. So it's just um, making, making the most of every opportunity that I get and, you know, being better than I was last year. That's my biggest thing. Just working hard and um, just be the best, the best for you. Now there'll be a new head coach for next season, Scott Milanovic and, and a guy you've probably gotten to know a little bit over the last year, but what do you think about him coming in and what he's able to, to bring to a team? Yeah, it's, uh, especially like getting getting to work with him a little bit last year too. Like he was, um, he's just an awesome coach to be around. Like uh, mm-hmm. the connection with the guys that he brought, like his drive and like the meeting rooms and stuff like that. I'm sure he's gonna he's gonna take us all away. Like I knew he would last year too, right? So mm-hmm. um, I don't know. I just I'm really I'm really happy to get a chance to get to work with him more and get to connect with him a little bit more than I did last year. So. I think uh, he's going to be great for our team, and I'm sure all the guys are going to love having him as a head coach. Was it a thought in your mind to get this deal done before this talking period between teams, kind of this stagnant part of the free agency or as we prepare for free agency? Was this something you wanted to get done prior to that? Um, yeah, you know, you it, it's a risk that you take. You know, you, mm-hmm. you want to get something done or do you want to – have the chance to maybe not have something ready to go. And then you're just hoping like something comes up. So um, I'm really happy that I was able to do it before the talking stages came and, you know, get, get settled in and like kind of know what your home's going to be for the next year. And I'm glad yeah. again, that it's with Hamilton. So I'm glad that I was able to do it before, you know, free agency opens, but you know, this week's going to be crazy because uh, there's going to be, you know, a lot of names being thrown to other teams and it's like just wild news that's going to pop up. So I'm glad that I have my home for next year. and I'm happy that it's with Hamilton. 
for those guys who are sitting out or talking during these stages, what's that process like? Has that been something you've been involved in? And, and how weird is this kind of time and in, in being basically solving where you're going to be playing for the next year or two or whatever that may be? Yeah. So that's, that's the thing. Like this is my first year being a free agent because I was a rookie mm-hmm. for the last three years. So going yeah. through the process for the first time, you know, it's eye opening at some parts, but it's also like, you're not really used to how it works because I've never done it before, but then talking to some of the veteran guys and stuff like that, it's like just being patient and not getting too stressed out, you know, like, um, you know, you know, your worth and you know, like the, what you did last year, what you put on tape. So I'm sure everything will work out, but obviously it's the waiting game and just like the stress factor of like, what's going to happen is the biggest thing. Yeah. But all I can say is, you know, everything works out and everything's is it's got its timeline. So it's just be patient and good things will come. I know there's still a lot of pieces to be added to this puzzle and we're waiting to see how this roster shapes up. But, but do you think that this team is, has the potential to compete once again for a championship and be a playoff team again? Oh, of course. Like we're Hamilton's always been in the playoffs for like the past years now. And we've mm-hmm. always had like that drive that, you know, we're, we're more than just a first round team. Right. So that's what I think uh, that we're going to bring this year and, you know, be able to get to that great cup is always the goal for every year. And I think like we definitely have the opportunity to get to where we want to be, you know, last year fell short just a little bit. And, you know, of course the great cup was in Hamilton. So it would have been awesome playing at home against like wherever, whoever it could have been. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, being in front of our fan base is just, you know, it's a benefit in itself and it gives us like that upper hand. I think a lot of teams know that. So I think we got the drive and we're, we're going to be really good this year for 2024. Well, Mark, I'm excited to see you back playing for the Ticats. I'm sure Ticats fans will be excited to see you back here come May. The best name a kicker's ever had in the CFL. I'm going to stick to that, and he's going to be in the black and gold next year. So, Mark Leggio, I appreciate you joining me today, man, and looking forward to seeing you come back to Tim Hortons Field. Hey, awesome, man. Thanks for having me, and just uh, glad to be part of the Hamilton family. Oski, we 